well, welcome back, Defender fans. And behind me, you will probably see a very interesting uh, brown Series 2. Uh, and until two weeks ago, this was John's uh, daily driver. So John was kind enough to have a chat with me and tell me a little bit more about his truly unique vehicle. And, uh, well, I'll let him explain. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, John Horn. I'm a Yorkshireman, tight-fisted Yorkshireman. Um, and uh, until 1970, I was a somewhat uncivil servant. Uh, a job in the Yemen, a two-year posting in the Yemen, changed life completely. And I quit the job and went into adventure travel. And I've been in adventure travel now for the past 50 plus years. Well, yes, it's uh, an amazing story. I belong to the Series 2 Club, Land Rover Series 2 Club. And the secretary in uh, 2005 alerted me to this vehicle, which had been found uh, in a garage in uh, North Wales, in Maddock. And it belonged to a Lady Sopwith Pilkington. And that right. was the name on the V5, Lady Dorothy Sopwith Pilkington. And it was found in a garage and uh, as part of her estate when she died. I jumped on it straight away when I heard about it and managed to acquire it. Well, it was full of memorabilia. Uh, she'd been to Saudi Arabia, she'd been to South Africa, she'd been uh, from uh, Port Maddock to Cape Town in this vehicle. and. Uh, Inside it, I found a pair of her slippers, uh, a canvas hip bath, half a bottle of scotch, two packets of senior service, one still in the cellophane. It was full of history. It had badges on the front, Saudi Arabian AA, South African uh, Automobile Association. They vanished at billing one, oh, one time, yes. which was a bit of a shame. But it's full, this is the real deal, mechanically, 100% uh, bodily, exactly as it was found. Um, I was, uh, one of my neighbours commented that I, some car had crashed in the front and dented it. I said, no, I said, that was a rampage in Rhino in Tanzania, probably. You say you're the custodian, is that not the owner or Well, how no, it's, it's, a, it's a, a kind of a funny story. I heard about it in 2005, I bought it. I then ran it for, uh, let me see, six or seven years. Uh, an amazing time when it was my daily driver. I took it to North Africa with the guys, with uh, three other caravans wagons and a dormobile. Uh, and then I decided to move it on in 2011 and I sold it. I sold it to a couple of quite quirky guys, uh, Pat and um, uh, Graham. And uh, they had it. And I, I kept an eye on it. There was, it was it came up now and again in the odd periodical. And then, all of a sudden, I saw it was up for sale. <laughs> and it was at a reasonable price. So I bought it, I sold it, and then I decided to buy it back. Went down with Martin with the idea of buying it back. Martin is my buddy. He was, um, we went in his vehicle. Uh, and then when we got to it, I walked towards it and there was, uh, the two guys standing there and the Land Rover and I said yep yep I'll have it back and Martin said if you don't I will and James said well yeah if I had room I'd have it so obviously it was a good buy so I negotiated the deal with Graham took out the wad which was the deposit and said there's a deposit give me your bank details Graham so he gave me the back so I tried to do the transfer it didn't go so I, he's got the deposit here <laughs> And I've got the money in the bank, but it's not going through. Enter Martin, stage right. Uh, mine will probably work. <laughs> it's good to have so friends he, like that. So he did the bank transfer and he did offer me. He said, John, he said, I've got it. But if you want to, you know, if your bank transfer will go through to me, you can have it. Otherwise, he said, I'll keep it as an investment and you can drive it. And that's the result. So I'm the custodian. Uh, Martin is the owner. What year is this vehicle and what is it? Well, this is a 1971 uh, Land Rover Series 2A um, when, uh, and it's got a Carawagon conversion. This is a bespoke uh, conversion done by Searles of Sunbury in 90, well, in the, uh, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and uh, we're a bit precious about one thing and that's when people come up and say, did you make it yourself? 
No, no, it's, it's a very expensive, originally a very expensive uh, uh, conversion. And it's got uh, an elevating roof. That roof goes absolutely flat when you're driving. You know, it, it goes flat and clips front, front and rear. And inside, uh, there's a sofa bed, which makes into a double bed. And there's also a hammock in the roof. Right. So this one, this particular one is a three berth. Three berth. So this will sleep three people? Yes. Yeah, uh, they'd have to be really good friends. Yes. <laughs> but uh, the advantage is it's got standing room and for men of a certain age to be able to put your strides on standing up is an incredible... Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and in, in terms of the mechanics of it, uh, you, you said this was your daily driver. Is this, you know, is it the original engine that you've got in there or what? Uh, what no, when I, when I bought it, it had a um, two and a quarter petrol engine which was pretty well tired uh, and with the help of some guys from the series 2 club we had a workshop meet and we changed the engine to a, a, a better two and a quarter petrol uh, but then they're, they're quite thirsty so for my 70th birthday way back one of the guys Big Dave said you find an engine from a modern Land Rover Discovery he said I'll put it in for you and so it had uh, a Land Rover Discovery engine in. This means it does up to 35 to the gallon, which is quite incredible. Well, that is um, very good um, but job. that engine was very tired when I uh, took it for, to Morocco. So when we uh, acquired, reacquired it, we decided to uh, refurb the engine. So it's now got a refurbished 200 TDI engine in it. And we've done the, uh, the brakes, the steering, it's got the remote uh, uh, brake servo, we've done the clutch, the gearbox and the engine. So mechanically it is 100%. The body stays as original. Absolutely, as it should do. Yeah, yeah. And one interesting fact, when you talk about these as a daily driver, not many people would be uh, uh, thinking that a daily driver has been to how many countries? Uh, this is probably, well, it, <laughs> It's difficult to say. There is a, I found a manila envelope in the back and it said that uh, by George we did it and it chronicled her journey from Port Maddock uh, in North Wales through Europe, through Africa, across the Sahara to uh, East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania and down to Cape Town. But there was a badge on the front, Saudi Arabian AA. There was another badge on the front, uh, South African AA. There was a sticker in the back from uh, Kathmandu. So it's it's... It's been around absolutely before I, before I got it, of course. And do you have any plans for the vehicle in the future? There's always one more trip, you know, for my definitely final, absolute, the end swan song. I would like to go down through Italy, uh, ship to uh, Tunis, drive through Tunisia, across Algeria, into Mauritania, to the Atlantic Ocean and back up north. Well, that sounds like That's an amazing swan song. <laughs> John, I, I see something, you're obviously like a, a fresh coffee in the morning, because is that a coffee grinder on your bumper? No, it's not a coffee grinder. Have you never tried eating camel meat? It I is, haven't. It is tough as old boots, but put it through a grinder and you can make a, a pretty good camel burger. And that's what we've used it for. Very nice. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't have guessed that. And John, thanks for taking time. I can see there's lots of people around uh, very interested in this vehicle, and so they should be. Thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you.